This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. That's Roy Campbell. And I'm Amy Goodman. As we turn now to John Perkins, returning to our airwaves, author of Confessions of an Economic Hitman. Years ago, he wrote the words, economic hitmen, EHMs, are highly paid professionals who cheat countries around the globe out of trillions of dollars. They funnel money from the World Bank, the U.S. Agency for International Development, and other foreign so-called aid organizations into the coffers of huge corporations and the pockets of a few wealthy families who control the planet's natural resources. Their tools include fraudulent financial reports, rigged elections, payoffs, extortion, sex, and murder. They play a game as old as empire, but one that's taken on new and terrifying dimensions during this time of globalization. I should know, John Perkins writes, I was an EHM, an economic hitman. Welcome to Democracy Now! Thank you, Amy. It's great to be here again. Well, since we have last talked, uh, many things have taken place from the World Trade Organization meetings in Hong Kong to Evo Morales being elected in Bolivia to the New York City transit strike. Can you talk about the connections you see? I think we're seeing a, a real change in consciousness, which is something we called for here last, last year about the same time, and one of the reasons I wrote the book, because people need to be aware uh, we live in a democracy, and people need to be aware of what's going on, and I think increasingly people are becoming aware of that. Yes, Bolivia voted for Evo Morales, who ran on a very strong anti-corporation, anti-U.S. Uh, platform, and now Evo Morales becomes one of seven presidents in South America, representing over 80 percent of the population of South America, who have voted, uh, presidents who have gone into office because they opposed American policy. We see in the New York transit strike uh, laborers standing up to the corporatocracy saying we deserve to have pension funds, we deserve to have health care, we deserve to have benefits. And yes, at the World Trade Organization in Hong Kong, we basically saw the corporatocracy beaten. In the end, they put together uh, you know, a statement that made it sound like things were all hunky-dory, but in fact, the developing countries really won in that one. Of course, that started in 99 in Seattle and then again in 2003 in Cancun uh, with the World Trade Organizations there. So I think in the last year, we've seen a tremendous uh, rise in consciousness among people uh, that uh, we want to move into new directions, becoming more democratic, make our leaders respond in democratic ways. When you talk about yourself as an economic hitman, explain very briefly, though we have spoken before, for people who didn't hear that conversation, talk about your work as a consultant. Well, as an, uh, we economic hitmen basically in the last uh, four decades have managed to create the world's first truly global empire. And I talk in detail in, in the book, Confessions of an Economic Hitman, about this and in various countries where we went in uh, to create this first truly global empire. We've done it primarily without the military. The military comes in only as a last resort. We've done it through economics and we've done it very, very subtly. So it's been a secret empire. Unlike all of history's previous empires, most Americans don't realize that we've created this empire. They don't realize what we've done in Latin America. And the way economic hitmen work, it, we use many different techniques, but probably the most typical is that we'll identify a company that has resources our corporations covet, like oil. We'll arrange a huge loan from an organization like the World Bank for that country, but the money won't go to that country at all. It goes to big U.S. corporations, Bechtel, Halliburton, ones we all hear about all the time, to build infrastructure projects in that country. These projects, like industrial parks, and power plants benefit the very rich of those countries and do nothing for the poor except to leave the country in a huge debt, one it can't possibly repay, which means it can't give social services, education, health to its poor, and is put in a position where it doesn't repay its debts. So at some point, we economic hitmen go back in and we say, look, you can't repay your debts, so give us a pound of flesh, sell oil to our oil companies real cheap, or vote with us at the next UN vote, or send troops in support of ours someplace in the world. And that's how we've created this empire. And we've done it without most Americans even realizing that it's happening. And explain who you were working for. Well, I was recruited by the National Security Agency, the agency that's getting so much attention right now because of spying on Americans while I was still in college at Boston University. And the National Security Agency put me through a series of very extensive tests, including lie detector tests, personality tests. And I was in business school. They determined that I could be a good economic hitman. 
they also discovered a lot of weaknesses in my character. I, I like to think of them as kind of the big, the three big drugs of our culture, uh, money, power, and sex, that they could use as a hook to bring me in. So I was told from the very beginning by this amazing woman, Claudine, who's described in detail in the book, uh, who was basically my trainer, that look, you're going into a dirty business. Once you're in, you can never get out of this business, but we're going to make it very attractive for you to go into this business. Now, you didn't join the NSA. No, I never worked directly for the NSA. I worked for a company called Charles T. Maine, big consulting firm out of Boston. And these days, almost all of this work is done by private contractors. It's not done directly by the CIA or the NSA. They may recruit us, but we work for private industry. The same is true of the jackals, Amy. If, if economic hitmen fail, which we don't usually do, but I did in Panama, for example, and I tell in detail in the book about how that ended up, but my failure ended up in a jackal going in and assassinating Omar Torrijos, the president of Panama, when economic hitmen fail, the jackals go in and either overthrow governments or assassinate leaders. And uh, they too do not work directly for the government. These days they're private contractors. The, the days of the government agent, the old 007 who's licensed to kill are long gone. When you say you failed, you mean what? Well, I was sent in to Panama to bring Omar Torrijos around, to bring him into our system, and he uh, refused to do that. He said, look, I know if I play your game, he told me directly, if I play your game, um, I'll become very rich, but that's not what interests me. I want to help my poor people. And so he said, you can either get out of Panama or play the game my way. Well, we decided to stay and try to bring him around. He never would come around. And I knew all along that if I failed to bring this man around, something dire would happen to him. And you know, this is what's going on in Latin America right now. Evo Morales is being visited this week by an economic hitman who's going into his office and saying, well, congratulations, Mr. President. Who? Uh, who is he being visited by? Well, an economic hitman who have, has to be, remain nameless at this point. But well, going we're going to leave it there for right now. Um, but this is just part one of our conversation as we come to the end of our hour. Uh, we're talking to John Perkins. Confessions of an Economic Hitman is his book uh, from a man who's done it, who's been there, who calls himself an economic hitman. Democracy Now! produced by Mike Berkshire, Hodel Caduce, John Hamilton, Anna Nagara, Elizabeth Press, Yoruba Rich, and Maddie Harper, Anna Mate, and Nell Geyser. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.